Well, welcome back to my uh, detailed modeling tutorial for Blender. Uh, I want to start off with uh, an apology and a correction. I, for some reason, did not remember that I had better drawings. So particularly for the top and bottom, the side drawings that we have, this, you know, this, this one that I considered my, my best drawing, I actually had top and bottom versions um, made by the same person. So uh, if that messes you up, I apologize. Uh, I don't know why I forgot they were there, but I had them, so I put them in, I brought them into the scene. And the only thing I really had to do was I had to um, adjust the tip of my wing a little bit, because my the profile that I used before was a little off from this, so I adjusted that. Uh, so my apologies, I'm going to provide links to these three drawings, because I found them on the internet. Uh, so if you're going to follow along, you should be able to use at least these three and start off with something good. The other thing that I did in the order to save some time is I added some more details to the model. I think the one we left off last time, uh, we just had the wings and the fuselage, those shrinks, but uh, I added you know, radiators canopy and the elevator. And there's nothing particularly going on special in here. I, I didn't think it would be worthwhile having you watch me do it since I use exactly the same techniques that I use to create the wings and the fuselage. Uh, just a lot of you know, stretching using uh, lattices and uh, proportional editing to shape things so that they you know, so that they match our profiles. All right, so if you know how to do that with the fuselage and wings, you can do it with everything. Uh, I also did some organization. So I have all of these pieces here inside of this shrinks collection. And these are going to be the basis for the rest of our model. All the pieces we make, all the detail pieces are going to be uh, based off of this geometry, which is why it's important to make this geometry accurate to begin with. Um, yeah, so I have, I have a, that's where all the shrinks are. The next step is to start adding some details to the model. And I thought I'd start off with a canopy. That's a fairly simple piece. So I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to move it to the scene collection. And we're just going to hide the rest of our shrinks for now. We don't need them. And if we go into side view, you can see that we've got some cuts to make because the canopy seam is, is right there. So I'm going to, well, you know what, I also, when I, um, off scene, I created a bunch of planes, and these planes correspond to places where I want to make cuts in this, in these pieces. I'm going to make another one right there. So you can see that I've got parallel planes for the back of the canopy. I've got a plane here that's going to split these two pieces apart. So I'll show you how I use these um, here, but I also have another video that I've done uh, that explains in more detail my shrink wrapping uh, methodology. So I might kind of do a short version of it here and then point you toward the longer version just so I don't have to redo a tutorial. So to start off with, I'm going to turn off the modifiers here because we don't want, particularly we don't want subdivision on. So if I take this, select all, and then left click on that piece, and then I hit F3, knife, and take knife project, and make sure you hit cut through. I don't have screencast keys on. Now that'll have created a cut right there. So we can now separate the front windshield from the back windshield. So I'm just going to hit P and pack that, take that selection off. Next thing I want to do is I want to start adding some loop cuts here based on where the window frames are. And one and nine, this is like a welded seam and a recessed section. So I'm going to actually cut like right here on hit A and C, draw straight down. And I'm going to go up from there. I'm going to the right keys. So K for knife, A, C, go straight up. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll start down here. And we're going to do the same across here. And if they're a little off, you can move them up. And one right here. All right, so now we have this piece here, which is our winch. You know, I'm going to actually put another one here because we want this bit. And I'm going to go from the middle. It's easier to grab. Keep hitting the X key. And then I can go down from here. All right, so now I've boxed out the glass bit. Actually, this one needs to be up there. All right, so we got one cut there, and now we can take the glass bits. And we don't need those in this part of the model, so I'm going to hit P, selection, separate them, and we're just going to hide them for the moment. And here, what I do next is I kind of I look at what I can reduce here, things that I don't need anymore. Um, because as you cut pieces of geometry off, sometimes you've got loop cuts that were needed for other adjacent pieces. So I think it's it's not a bad practice to to get rid of things you don't need, uh, take it back down to the absolute minimum, and then uh, just add back only what you need. And this is also going to help straighten some stuff out if you've got problems with some bends. All right, so we're just kind of being minimalist here. Only the, only the loop cuts we need. And from the top, I need to cut go from here back and here forward, and we'll take these pieces as glass. Oh, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a piece there, because I didn't do all the way through. All right, all right, so now we're good. We got glass, 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 glass. And the top and bottom um, pictures don't quite line up. Let's look like I'm missing a piece here. 
now, now we're on. Now we're good. The top and bottom images don't quite line up, unfortunately, but uh, from the side I think we're going to be okay because we want you know, that line to continue. So I picked the wrong ones there. All right, that looks good. P, separate them. We're going to hide that as well. So now we have the basic canopy layout. And I'm just going to hide this stuff here for now. And just to make sure I don't have any extra lines here, I'm going to get rid of some stuff. So we're going to add some properly spaced things in a moment. All right, so that's, that's, big, that's the uh, foundation of our canopy. The... Um, we want to add a shrink wrap modifier to this, and we want the shrink wrap to be the canopy shrink that we had that we made earlier, or you know, that I made off screen that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And by linking to that shrink wrap, it's going to make sure that this pan, this you know, this unit conforms to that shape regardless of what we do. So, you know, if I was for some reason to move these, try to move these pieces out, it's not going to let me do. It. It's going to keep them, you know, along the surface of that shrink. So that means we can do some modifications to this um, without worrying about it changing its shape. So now I want to go back and I want to add some loop cuts where they make sense. Uh, so we want, obviously, loop cuts to keep our glass tight. Yeah, these corners need some extra reinforcements, otherwise they'll round out. And same thing with the leading edge here. Down here. And I'm sure you guys have seen this kind of thing before in order to keep your corners tight. Later on in this tutorial, I'm doing panels in the aircraft. We'll be using a lot of... Looks like we have an extra vertex somewhere. Um, later on in the project, we'll be using the bevel modifier. Uh, a lot. Uh, so we don't have to do all these edge loops. Uh, but for this canopy, because I've got some thickness on it and I've got glass in it, uh, I think I want to go with uh, just, you know, something kind of the traditional subdivision uh, edge loops to kind of retain position. All right, so I have them all the way around. Get some down here. One underneath. One here. All right, we're getting close. And some of these might be adjust, need some adjustment in a minute because I'm going to let me know. I'm going to apply the shrink wrap once I get a little bit more geometry in here. So I'm going to add a couple of loops here just so that uh, avoids stretching when um, the subdivisions when the subdivision um, modifier runs. I'm going to get rid of these two actually for a moment just so I can create evenly spaced. I must have an extra vertex there. That means I need to connect these. All right, almost done here. Try to make them the same number, so I got four. I like one there, two. And these also help prevent um, UV stretching once we do our UVs. I'll throw one there, just for fun. All right, so now if I take my shrink wrap and I duplicate it, I want to apply it because we may have moved some stuff around. If I apply that shrink wrap, it's going to force this geometry down to where it's going to kind of like snuggle it down to where it needs to be. And then we can just double check to make sure that our our lines look good. Like these could be. I'd rather have them straight. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. It just makes me feel better. All right, so that's our canopy frame so far. Put the subdivision on it. Looks like I missed a couple of reinforcements there. So one goes there, obviously. One goes here. Did I miss any others? Yes, I did. And obviously, the closer you make these together, the tighter things are. It's still stretching times because I don't have these. All right. All right, that should do it. He said, hopefully. All right, uh, we may sharpen those up later because I, th I think on the real plane they're actually pretty tight. So, so the next thing, now that we've got our subdivisions on, we've got our shrink wrap on, I want to just since I added a couple things, I'm going to actually duplicate it and apply it. And I don't think I need it at this point because uh, we've got enough geometry on there to, to make the shrink wrap kind of stick. I'm going to add a solidify, even thickness. Now later on when we do panels, we'll do only rim, but because you're going to see the inside and outside of this canopy, I'm going to do both. It's probably more than, I have no idea, it's a thick canopy, say 15 millimeters. And when we apply the solidify, we're going to have to fix these, these edges. But So that's the canopy so far. If I bring back the glass, I can redo this geometry, because I don't need all these, and I want them to be planar. Um, I can add a couple of evenly spaced out, and I can even join these. So it's going to be behind a block, and I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to go to object edit, edit mode and just scale it up 
And I'm going to go into normals and make sure I'm pushing on normals, normals. And I'm going to push it. Actually, first thing I want to do is I want to add that shrink wrap just to make sure that it snuggles down. So I'm going to add another shrink wrap. And I'm going to put a canopy shrink. You can see that did move a little bit, so that's that was a good thing to do. And now I'm just going to push it back to recess it just a little bit. Right. And then I'm going to give it some thickness as well. Maybe eight, less than eight. In fact, I'm going to turn on auto smooth to get rid of that shadow. Maybe we'll get out of MacCap for a second. Maybe we'll turn off mirror so I can see the inside a little better. In fact, I have a, a simple glass shader already set up. It's just a glass shader, so I'm going to sign that so we can see a little better. And we'll just adjust that to make it a little thicker. I want a little bit of a seam, but I want the glass to have some thickness, but I think it's armored. And then this guy, I'm going to add a shader. I called it BF109. And we'll just assign shaders to pieces as we do them. That way we keep track of, uh, we know that you know, this piece has been touched, this piece hasn't been touched yet. So, you know, that's that's the uh, process for cutting out panels. Um, we're fortunate that this plane doesn't have a really curvy windshield. It makes it a little more difficult. This panel here, um, notice it is exactly along the back of this piece. Um, and it's along the front of, you know, the, the back end of the canopy. Now, I did go ahead off screen and make um, some of these pieces. That's just to save some time. And, I'll, and I use exactly the same process where I cut a chunk off of the base mess, base mesh, uh, and then cut out pieces that I didn't want anymore, which gave me this piece. And then I use this, these panels here as shrink wrap targets for the edges of these panels. And instead of me doing a whole tutorial on that, I'm going to point you to a tutorial I've already done on how I do, um, how I do these panel shrink wraps. It's, it's a standalone tutorial. And instead of me redoing it, um, I'm just going to point you there and say, that's what I do when I make these pieces. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably it for this lesson. Uh, I would go watch that lesson next. I'm going to put a link for it in the description if you're not familiar with my method of using uh, planes as ways to uh, make sure that panels are straight and snug against each other. And then I'm going to do some off-screen stuff. I'm going to finish up this canopy, and then maybe in the next lesson we'll talk about um, some control surfaces.